These are a bunch of secret and advanced tips and tricks that you potentially have never heard of, but that you absolutely do need to know of for your PAL world adventure. For example, if you want to transfer huge numbers of materials without getting encumbered, you can just drag huge stacks of materials out of the first storage, keep it out in the open, and then simply just move towards the desired destination and put all those materials in the new storage. Your weight capacity will stay untouched. Easy peasy. But also, did you know that you can make your Vixies start digging up better spheres than just normal ones? You already might know that having a bunch of Vixies in your ranch will net you a bunch of spheres to make you level up faster. In fact, it's the fastest way to level because you can use all these free spheres to get those juicy bonus experience streaks when catching 10 of the same pals. However, the normal spheres quickly become outdated as you progress and you need better spheres to get better capture rates. And condensing a bunch of Vixies to get at least a 3 stars or level 4 partner skill Vixie will make your new Vixies dig up the much better spheres, the Mega Spheres. Very useful to know, like the third tip on the list. If you have large breeding projects, say for example, for breeding many Vixies to condense into higher rank Vixies, then viewing cages are your best friend. Nobody seems to utilize these cages, but they are a bunch of extra storage essentially and very easy to make and require very little space to actually place. Your normal storage boxes will get full very quickly if you breed a lot and these viewing cages are the ultimate solution to that problem and you can look at your projects in real time as well absolutely amazing all across the board and while that is definitely amazing if you have heat or cold resistant armor make sure to also get a bunch of thermal undershirts for the opposite type to survive in most areas in the game say you're wearing heat resistant armor mixed with a cold resistant undershirt you can now successfully maneuver through many of the arctic areas with a lot of cold as well as say the desert areas that are very hot without getting penalized for it and for the undershirts there are higher rank versions as well like plus one plus two that you can get from say chests to make this even more successful for the more extreme areas but if you don't want to bother with that stuff then kitson is a very clutch alternative it is a pal that you can collect somewhere in the mid game and has the fantastic ability to negate both cold and heat while riding it very very good not just good for if you don't want to bother with heat or cold resistant gear but also say if you died or you just forgot your gear and you need to run back to get your items in the desert you can then just in those cases use kitson to make sure you don't get affected by the weather it's also a great pal in terms of combat so it's definitely not a wasted slot in your party composition by just simply having it get your typical passives like swift on it to make it even faster and you have a very good mount right here just like making extreme money in this game is very good and nice and you can do that with ingots these can be turned into nails and sold for a nice price to the merchants. In fact, I found this to be one of the best ways to make a lot of money very easily in this game, just by simply utilizing this conversion. And why would you visit merchants when you can just capture all of them and place them in your base? This will make it insanely easy for you to access buying useful items and selling stuff to get rich, but also have a quick catalog of acquiring new types of pals that you don't have yet or need to get quickly, as various types of merchants sell different things. Having merchants in your base also grants you the additional functionality of being able to refresh your merchant stock by just simply swapping them in and out of your base. It is a new feature you get and enslaving humans was never this fun before. You might have noticed something peculiar while I was catching them merchants. Yes, you can use your failed catch attempts to manipulate the position of whatever you want to catch or even just use it for strategic purposes as whatever breaks from the sphere will end up on top of the sphere making it possible to completely screw over your enemies. But while this merchant will definitely feel screwed over, at least he isn't forced to eat broccoli on a daily basis. But thankfully, broccoli is becoming cool again thanks to Indifferent Broccoli Server Hosting. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Use my link and you can immediately check them out and get two days trial for free. Yes, and if you have any problems, their customer support have no lives whatsoever, so you'll quickly get help. Also, they use quality hardware to host fast servers. Not the shady aftermarket stuff, you won't get scammed, don't worry. If you get a bad experience, I will personally visit them and nuke their headquarters with my army of daydreams use my exclusive link and you know what to do and while you might know what to do with the link in the description you may not know about grappling guns yet if your weight capacity has been exceeded use this thing to move around yes it works even if you're encumbered but you may already have known that so to make it even better we're going to remove the cooldown if you quickly unequip and equip your grappling gun it'll reset the cooldown as well so you can move around even faster while weighing way too much but maybe that is not good enough yet so make all grappling gun variations in the game 
game and use them in order of least rare to most rare. See, there is no shared cooldown here. All grappling guns have their own cooldown. And if you use them in the way I told you to, you will shuffle through the cooldowns in such a way that by the time you've used all four cooldowns, you will pretty much be back at the normal grappling gun and its cooldown being over. Meaning in this way you can pretty much just infinitely keep being Spider-Man. However, what Spider-Man couldn't do is butcher innocent animals. And if you have a lot of alpha pals that you initially got excited about but don't actually need, so the boss type of pals that you find in the overworld and are marked with a red boss icon in your boxes, you can still get their useful resources by using the meat cleaver and accordingly butcher your unwanted alpha pals. This way you'll still get those ancient technology parts and other useful materials you might have thought were gone forever. However, Pita might not approve of that tip, but they will definitely approve of using the sword function for the pal box. This is especially useful if you want to use the condenser and want to have similar pals grouped together essentially. You can do this through the interface of the condenser however, but instead you can achieve the sorting in the pal box itself, especially the pal deck option is nice. It's an obscure way to do it and you do have to think outside of the box to actually do it, but if you then go back to your condenser, all pals will be sorted. And for those that don't know what the condenser does, a quick explainer is that it just melts a bunch of a pal type together to get a better version of it. It's highly advised to use it as often as possible. Staying with obscure interface tips however, press R in your storage box every time you open it. R is absolutely amazing. It puts away all the items in your inventory that already have a stack in the storage box. And this is never explicitly told to you in the game, but you do see the command for it in the right bottom corner. Just like a lot of base related tips are never told but are insanely valuable. For example, make sure you build your base on a flat open area near useful resources like iron, coal, palladium and similar elementary types of resources that are used for a lot of crafting. While the yield won't be as good as say with a mining outpost, the consistent passive influx of these resources through your pals just yoinking them will help out tremendously with the more fundamental stuff that you will do a lot like repairing your damaged gear. But if we're talking about mining stuff then we can definitely not forget about dick toys the fastest miner in the game but only if you use him or her from your actual party so not as a base worker because yeah that seems a bit bucked at this point in time it may be fixed however if you're watching this in the future it is an easy fix however just look at this throw them out dick toys nukes those deposits and queries like it's nothing and gets you all those juicy resources pretty much instantly and while we're talking about useful pals dark pals yes all of them they never sleep because they embrace the darkness and this makes them very useful workers as they work 24 7 and there are a bunch of dark pals in the game so you can really abuse this to the next level just make sure they don't get depressed and unhealthy drop some hot springs and make sure they have good food at all times but even if your pals die you can quickly revive them anyways don't place them in the pal box no remember the viewing cages put them in there and they will instantly come back to life and if you want to quickly get materials required for something that you want to build build it and then quickly cancel it this will give you all the materials of whatever you want to build and this is actually very handy for if you don't want to go through your chests or if you have the materials in one base but actually need these materials to build the item in one of your other bases regarding food you don't want your food to get spoiled now do you so why not abuse your debt to maintain your food yes you can respawn drop your loot back and this will freeze all the timers for everything in set loot back at the position where you died so you can tactically die at a place that is convenient for you and essentially make your loot back a fridge a free fridge that you can stack even because you can die multiple times and get multiple bags this way where you can also preserve your food and just all your loot in general if abusing your debt goes beyond your more Moral compass however then alternatively you can intellectually make good use of your containers food like candy floss or honey never spoils so you can put the food that you want your pals to eat in a food box and then stock up the rest with either honey or candy floss your pals eat from left to right so they will eat whatever you designate for them to eat and then you fill up the remainder of the spots with the non-perishable food this is especially handy because your pals will otherwise fill up the food box with harvested food that can in fact spoil this way you force them to not place anything inside of these food boxes and now your pals will stock the food in more useful containers like the cooler box that also keeps your food fresh and in similar ways of thinking you can always fill up all the empty slots in your containers with placeholder items as this forces your pals to bring over stuff to a container that already has a stack of that item because otherwise they will just drop it in the nearest container both tips are very useful for storage and container management and oh while we're talking about boxes and 
and containers and that kind of stuff. If you want to prevent a raid, just move all your pals into a box to avoid said raid. It looks hilarious and they won't do anything. Just make sure you're not in the base yourself, however. However, you can also make very powerful party compositions consisting out of very powerful pals in this game to just simply kill your enemies instead. For example, did you know you can have five pals out at the same time to pretty much one shot everything or that you can essentially stack a bunch of passives and bonuses from partner skills to get insane damage output or just make teams with a lot of synergies where for example you have a main summon that gets boosted by your other pals in the team and not just your summon but yourself as well or if you are a bit creative you can make insane party setups where you can infinitely kite around and pretty much dodge any incoming attacks while dealing insane lightning damage yourself yes i already have an entire video about exactly how to do all of that and how to make such parties and just powerful pal themes basically obscure tips and tricks you don't really hear about anywhere related to combat and party building and going over the most useful and highest damage pals in the game and just making your pals as overpowered as possible definitely check my other pal world video out if you're interested in all of that as well i also went over elemental damage in that video and as you see from the chart a lot of elements have one weakness and one element they're super effective against except for fire which is powerful both against grass as well as ice making fire at this point in time the de facto best element now it is also a fact that you can get a synergy bonus when you actually use attacks that fit the elemental type of your pal so with fire pals if you use fire attacks you get a 20 percent bonus to your damage output just for using the right elemental damage so for example feeding your pals fruits from those trees that gives them other types of elemental skills might not be that smart unless of course you want to cover various enemy weaknesses with the same pal however what is fun to know is that the mounts that give you a boost to your damage type such as chillet which makes your damage of the dragon type or univolt which makes your damage of the lighting type will in fact also boost your damage output these values were data mined and the bonus for your attacks can get all the way up to 100% extra damage. It's actually really insane. Hence why I made sure to cover great setups with those types of pals and ideas in my broken teams video as well. As well as making an amazing standalone team in general for fire as an elemental damage. To make sure we abuse fire being super effective against two elements. Now to give some more combat related tips. I would recommend when using a mount based pals to use their most powerful abilities while mounted. And then immediately jump off after jumping off your mounts abilities cooldowns will instantly refresh and they can use those powerful abilities twice in succession this way it is a very powerful combo what is also powerful is to call your pal right before it's about to get hit back to home this is a good way to prevent incoming damage or annoying crowd control it's like a creative tool that you can abuse to guarantee your pal dodges powerful attacks but while you want to dodge powerful attacks you definitely don't want to miss out on pal fluid pal fluid is very useful to make a bunch of useful stuff like the earlier mentioned hot springs to make your pal workers not lose their mind but also cement for very important items like the higher tier spheres which you want to make a lot of you can get these pal flutes very easy by just going to coastal areas or just more generally areas with a lot of water pals like galpsies walks and pangolets anything that is blue basically gets the kill on sight mark uh, let's uh, put it like that and while that is a decent way to collect pal fluids even better is when you have some levels to go to the gobfin turfs faster point because this location has an amazing number of gobfins just laying around for you to turn into pal flutes essentially it's the best location i've found and it nets you a lot of pal fluid in a very very short time frame it's an insane farm and if we're talking about cement you can buy its other main ingredient bones very easily from the merchants in the game and yeah stone that is literally everywhere and you don't want your pals to walk everywhere to get through their food right so put your feed boxes in a position that minimalizes the distance they have to walk like central in your base or near important work structures. This way you make sure you get as much labor in as possible. Back to cement. While cement is an important material for quality spheres, what is also important is how you actually use these spheres to catch pals. Now you might know that you can increase your likelihood of catching pals by throwing the spheres from behind, but if you can manage to inflict a status effect like frozen or sleep or using the stun baton to electrify them and stun them like that, you will increase the catch rate even more. And what is fun is that you can actually stack status effects as well for an even higher catch rate so for example use the stun baton and then combine that with an application of fire and not just fire also poison to make your catch rate absolutely bonkers bonkers like eggs you really want to pick up all the eggs you come across in the world and get a bunch of egg incubators subsequently as fast as possible as you will collect eggs all the time and these are like massive xp deposits just waiting to give you insane experience just hatching these eggs gives you great xp that 
actually scales with your level as well, but these also give you the possibility to get actually very powerful late game pals early on in your playthrough if you're lucky. And if you're even more lucky, they might as well just have great passives as well while we're at it. So by all means, make sure to collect as many axes as possible to then hatch as many of them. It is a win-win situation. While collecting, you might check your map every now and then and see that the more you progress, the more the fast travel points will get sparser and sparser. So while many people consider using three bases, you might alternatively also want to use your third base option to function as a quick way of teleporting at all times. And you can use this as a handy tool to make sure you always have a point to fast travel from no matter where you are on the map. Like when you're close to an important boss or dungeon or there's no fast travel point inside. And while talking about the map, nobody seems to use the pins which can be very handy for stuff that doesn't show up like dungeons. It's very useful to use flying mounts that actually are small enough to travel through these dungeons so you can quickly go through them like Ragnarok for example. This is an amazing pal for maneuvering through these dungeons which also in turn is actually a beast in combat. But another secret trick is that when you reach the end of these dungeons and you don't like the boss that has been served on your platter, just go back a few rooms, return and you'll spawn a new boss. You can keep doing this till you get something that you like or use this to your advantage to get a boss you know your team will obliterate when considering elemental weaknesses. And now we're ending the video off with a rapid fire round covering pals with peculiar abilities that you can utilize in unorthodox ways that can be very useful. Veridash is a great pal for example to have with you for when you're doing base work as this pal gives you a nice boost to your own movement speed. So you can run around your base and get a lot of work done that way much faster. Gale Claw hopping is a very fast and weird way to get a lot of base going. Basically you just use your fast flying mount of choice then when you run out of stamina on your flying mount you hop onto Gale Claw and then accordingly dismount Gale Claw when you feel like doing so and go back to your flying mount but now your flying mount stamina has been reset. There are a few healing pals in the game like Tifant and Patilia but Lyleen knocked puts those to shame. This pal has insane healing so if you want to go for an alternative playstyle like that make sure to consider Lyleen knocked. Wombo Botan gives you insane weight capacity, especially if you have higher ranks of this spell. Get 4 or even 5 in your party to get a massive increase to your weight capacity. It can pretty much just double your weight capacity if you need it for a certain use case. For defending yourself against raids, Masanda Lux comes in clutch with the grenade launcher as this spell can easily trivialize entire gangs like it's nothing. And you get this spell's special ability relatively early on in the tech tree as well. An amazing tool to completely annihilate any that tries to raid you. And for the final tip, maybe one of the most important ones, is to subscribe to me and give the video a like. It will give you a lot of happiness in life and let me know your thoughts in the comments.